Welcome to the Into the Wilderness podcast. This is our third, third uh, live one that we're doing for YouTube. So if you're listening on iTunes, obviously you can't see us right now. Uh, but for those who are watching on YouTube, you'll now actually be able to see us uh, chatting away with people. And if you really feel inclined to look at us in the studio, but more importantly, our guests, because some of our guests are actually quite attractive as well. I mean, jo- Josh's jo- Josh, beard, hey, Josh's Josh beard James's is, beard. Is, is, um, yeah, then you can you can check it out on YouTube. So if you're uh, at all intrigued and you listen to this on Stitcher or iTunes or SoundCloud, then you, 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 you can, can go and have a look at YouTube. And now you can please, actually please see carry something. on downloading on, on. Oh yeah, yeah, please carry on, on, on iTunes and and so on. And also bear in mind that a lot of our guests live all around the world and all all have different ways of of communicating with us so some don't have skype some do some don't have landlines some don't yeah so it's a bit cheaper than flying (laughs) flying them uh, across the world so just uh bear with us when there's connection drops which uh, which happens quite often yeah but i mean we we try and hide it we'll we'll try and hide it from you we'll try and keep it completely seamless so you don't even realize it but uh yeah if you're hearing a little bit of echo and stuff in the background it's just because we're speaking to somebody on the other side of the world and it's through skype or most recently through facebook Facebook, which is what this this one's been done through we've never done that before so Um, but it worked so yeah amazingly it did work so who we got on today Byron? We have, uh, quite excitingly, Michaela uh, from those... Uh, quite, I bet you almost everybody who's listened to this has probably seen her on Facebook already. Michaela Hunting. I think it's just called Michaela yeah, Hunting. It is, yeah, 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 it yeah. is. Um, probably one of the most well-known... I really don't like the word huntresses, huntress, but yeah, she's probably the female most well-known hunter. Uh, huntress or female hunter in Europe. She's got she's 140, di- 150,000. She's thousand. definitely got the largest yeah, uh, presence largest on following. the show. So yeah. that's who we've got on the, the, the show today, which is very exciting. She's appeared in a lot of uh, newspapers and been part of a lot of the, the controversial hunting that has been banded around in the last 12 months. So that's who's coming on the podcast today. It's very exciting and really very, very interesting, inf- interesting person to speak to. Yeah. So uh, don't forget to uh, hit subscribe on uh, iTunes and also on YouTube on everything else it's also on SoundCloud and it's on Stitcher for the people using Android devices so we hope you enjoy the show hang on one more oh, thing hang on if you have 30 seconds go and give us um, a comment on iTunes so that we can get some star ratings yes yes yeah, so give us a give us a, a comment on iTunes uh, I, yeah, iTunes. Sorry, give it. Leave us a review. That's what I meant to say. A review. Le- sorry, leave a, leave review. us a review on iTunes. Give us five stars, hopefully, and uh, and like us a review. And basically, all that allows us to do is it gets put in front of more people, and more people. And that's the whole point. We need this to get in front of more people, and more people, uh, more hunters, and more people who are not hunters, because this is not. Although we talk about hunting a lot, it is about expressing everything that goes into to wildlife management and hunting we believe is a really big part of that and that's why it forms a lot of, uh forms a, a, a big part of the discussions in our shows but we really need to get these messages out to everybody and to do that it needs to go up the lists on the likes of itunes and the only way that can happen is if people it's, leave us comments it's it's, it's getting there it's but g- it is getting there we've got a lot of, a lot of people listening from all over the world now yeah we, we really do we've got we've got um America, we've got American listeners. A lot, so, lot, so lot of uh, Danish listeners. Thank you very much, Denmark. Yeah, and obviously the the people in the UK. Yeah, and obviously people in our own home country. Um, but yeah, it's going to be uh, a good podcast. This so, and and once again, this was this was requested uh, by some people. So it does work. If you want someone on or want discussion, so basically we had. Uh, someone asking about female hunters. Can we uh, get, get some female hunters? Female on, yeah. hunters on because we hadn't had any to this. Done. Point. Yeah. It's done, and and we've got one of the the largest, I guess, uh, known one in. Yeah, probably got the biggest biggest profile. profile. I would say certainly in Europe. So done. So if you want something on, we will do our best to to deliver to deliver. But it, we, we we hope you enjoy the show. Yeah, this uh, podcast, as all of them, is uh, brought to you and supported by the Scottish Association for Country Sports. Uh, you should definitely go and check out their website and we'll, we always have the, the link in the, the podcast description. So if you want to know exactly what they're about, go and check that out. Or if you were listening to the live podcast, I don't know whether it's part one or part two if you downloaded it, but it's all a single podcast 
on uh, YouTube. on YouTube, which was the live show with Fonan, we actually had the director of um, of the Scottish Association for Country Sports on, and he talked a little bit about the uh, the work that they've been doing. So um, if you want to know a bit more, then you go and check that out. Or go and check out their website, and uh, also check out our our uh, Facebook page as well. Now, now that you're mentioning all these things, uh, we we so we've decided in the, the last few weeks because we've. Uh, launched our series while well, launching our series when this is out it might actually be launched or almost launched yeah i think maybe Potentially. the first episode of the series might so be what we've soon. done is you'll notice this is on a new youtube channel so this is now on the the pace brothers podcast youtube channel so hit subscribe on that because uh as currently there's no one subscribed to it because it's brand new uh, brand new as we're recording this it's brand new so hit subscribe on that and then our other channel our pace brothers into the wilderness is just going to have our series on it we're just trying to make it easier for everyone. And then it's the same with our Facebook pages. Uh, our podcast page is separate now to the the series page. So like both the pages. And don't forget, if you actually want to see our content uh, and Facebook not to hide it, hit the three dots at the top and then... Favorite it. The favorite it. And then you'll That's see... That's a really important thing because it, otherwise it gets filtered and that way it'll come to the top of your feed. So if you want to know... Um, about all the bits and pieces that we're posting, then yeah, and we, add it to we, one of your favorite lists. We, we try not to bombard you with uh, junk. Junk. We try yeah. not to, and if we put something out, we try to make it as and relevant and good, put some good nice good pictures up for you. As, as possible. So subscribe to everything. <laughs> that's, that's the that's, bottom that's line. The bottom subscribe line. to everything and enjoy this podcast. Enjoy. Michaela, thank you uh, very much for joining us today. Uh, we know that it, we've been trying to organize you for a couple of weeks and finally we managed to find a time when you're actually not hunting, which I think is quite unusual. What what have you been up to in the last couple of weeks? Well, I was in uh, Sweden with uh, Camp Laponia and we were after moose and capercaillie and black crowds. Did you have any luck? And also, I was ice fishing as well. Ice fishing. So I've always wanted to do that. Yeah, me too, actually. That's I, with the that's with the, the tiny, tiny little fishing rods, isn't it? Yes, yes. <laughs> did, that's it. Did you did you catch anything? Well, um, just one small fish because it was minus forty three degrees. So fish uh, they don't eat when it's too cold. So we had lucky in two days because fish like ten centimeters. And it. <laughs> how do they? I mean, I've seen. But it was fun. <laughs> I've seen videos of it before, but h- how did you do it? Were you in a in a tent and then you cut a hole in the ice? How does it work? No, we took a sm- snowmobile and in the morning we went to the lake. There was like a small cabin where you can make a fire and heat up when you're dying, <laughs> you know. But you're outside on the lake and you make a hole. Actually, we had like five holes in the ice and I was fishing and my cameraman and my photographer and everyone was just trying to catch some fish, but it was too cold. Our guide said, you know, it's normal. They don't eat when it's too cold, like minus 43 degrees. I don't, I don't, so, know, what, I don't know what you're complaining about. Minus 43. It's been minus one or two here all, all, minus all week. 43. <laughs> I don't think I'd want to eat if it was no. minus 43. Either. Yeah. You know, that's... When, it, when we got back home and here was like minus one and everyone was like, oh, it's cold. And we were like, no, it's actually hot. You know, <laughs> After a week in Sweden in minus 40, it was hot. We were feeling like we're coming in the summer. <laughs> um, before we go on to any more of your hunting uh, experiences and expeditions and all the other stuff that you're involved in, how did this all start for you? What we, as a kid, were you involved in hunting? I, I mean, I actually don't know anything of your background at all, apart from what I've seen, you know, on, on like we were talking before we started well, recording with, with Charlie. Yeah, I was um, raised by my dad because we, we lived just me and my dad. My mom left us when I was like six years old and my dad was a hunter. So, but he never hunted for trophies. He hunts for meat because he was used to say, you know, animals don't belong to some cage or somewhere. They belong to the nature. And if you want the meat, go to nature and get it. So that's the way I was raised. And all these things about public hunting start like three or four years ago. I was in the United States. I had a boyfriend over there in state Indiana. 
And here in uh, Europe, you don't have so much hunting shows and people don't like hunting in general, not as much like they do in the United States where you put, turn a TV on and there is like five channels showing a hunting and all these things. When you yeah. go to Walmart, it's full of a hunting stuff. And, you know, I've seen all, all these things and I was like, oh, it's not exist in Europe. And the thing was, in that time, uh, I was also a kickboxer and I was represent my country in kickboxing and I was fighting in a, in a Florida or somewhere. And it went to check magazines like a fitness magazines. And one of them said, oh, she's hunter in her free time. She goes hunt. And then lots of media and tabloid magazines here in the Czech Republic start be like, oh, she's a killer. She's like a Melissa Bachmann. She's killing the innocent animals and <laughs> stuff like this. So that was time when I decided, oh, I will show these people and I will try to educate them and bring them into the hunting because here in Europe, it's like thousands of years traditions of a hunting. But now in the present time, people don't like a hunting. And I'm like, why? Everyone eats the meat, but they don't want to see where it comes from. And actually hunting is way better for us and for animals as well. So I decided to start showing this other side because it's like you can be vegetarian or buy a meat in a supermarket. And the hunter is something like a way in the middle. You know, you can eat the meat, but you don't harm environment that much. And you don't abuse the animals in the cages when you go hunting. So that's something that people need to understand and need to see. So I'm bringing it into media on the public and I'm first in the Czech Republic and I'm, think, I'm first in Central Europe at least. That's amazing. So you you, so that's it. you basically did that off the back of getting a hard time. And at that point, you weren't even a, a sort of a public hunting figure. It was just a case of they picked yeah. up that news story, and then you decided instead of hiding, yeah. you decided right, okay, if you want me to be in the in the in the media and on TV, let's do it and let's show how it's really done. Yeah, That's yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, we're we're going to go into a bit later on, obviously your your public profile now and and the kind of reactions that you get when you put up pictures because I've I've actually printed off a few comments from your page here, <laughs> um, so we'll, we'll go into that in a little bit. Um, they're all nasty, I'll admit, um, but it's yeah, not. It's it's yeah. it's it's it's, 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 <laughs> it's it's not a true reflection on on the majority of the, the 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 comments. But the point being is there is people out there saying this stuff, which some of it is quite disgusting actually. And I will say it out, and I will actually. Well, name... we, we might as well. Let's, we might should, as well go over it now. We go over it now. So obviously, you know, this is on your page because <laughs> it's on your page, and this is this is some of the. The stuff that is said to you, which, um, okay, so Dasha, um, I can't say their second name, <laughs> uh, th this is what they've said. This girl is a complete moron, probably a chip on her shoulder that uh, she needs to kill animals for fun and then pose for a nice picture next to dead bodies. Now, that's that, that's actually a tame one, um, and there the will... I'll try to refrain from some of the swearing on, on some of these. This one was actually an interesting one, and this one actually comes up quite a bit, not just on your page, but on quite a few pages. And this is, I suppose, the ignorance of people commenting without doing any research. So this this is comments um, on the picture that you had with a fellow deer and a muntjac. And they were laying next to each other, and someone, yeah. uh, uh, Noshad, uh, said, no good you killing a mother and a baby. And then Alex also put underneath, rest in peace, dear mother and dear son. Now, if anybody knew anything about those deer, they're not actually related in any way. It would be quite yeah, impressive you know, if they were. <laughs> there was a way, way better thing what happened to me a couple of months ago. I was hunting with the American huntress, Larissa. And we shot the roe deer, which is small kind of deer. And we shot the really old one. Like, I mean, we eat it, but we shot the old one. And your Daily Mail is like a UK Daily yeah, Mail. Yeah, we know, we know. There was like a title, oh, they shot the baby deer, you know. And it's like, there's a point, you know, because these things usually are made up by tabloids, magazines, and magazines like this in general, because they're looking for beavers and 
they want to bring up people on their page. So they're looking for a sensation. And if they would say, you know, here is a girl who hunting and who wants educated people about the hunting and it brings you really good things and it's good for nature, then nobody will read it. Not really. But if they say, oh, here is a killer girl who killing a baby of the animals, everyone will click on it and they will be, oh, that's horrible. And they go on my page and they're like, oh, you're a horrible person. But they eat eat a burger in a one <laughs> one hand and the second hand is typing, oh, you're a horrible person. Yeah. You know, and that's the point. We, 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 we do want to touch on um, female hunters and the way that they're represented in the media uh, shortly. I just want to read out two more of these these things. Uh, so there was Nick, um, Nick Ertz. Uh, put on one of your pictures, he says, um, he said, it's not necessary to eat meat and it's not healthy. And then he went on to say, there is no uh, scientific evidence uh, to support um, that eating meat uh, makes you healthy. He also said, vegetarians live longer and there is scientific evidence to prove this. Um, I haven't seen any. <laughs> to be um, so I guess I, I, I would I, love Nick to send us the info. Actually, uh, if Nick's listening, well, he he actually goes he goes on to say that it's in all of the international medical journals, uh, which means I'm I'm screwed. But I know my family averagely lives to about ninety years old, and they've all eaten meat. So yes, uh, I think I'll, I'll go with that. Then. Yeah, so I think I'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there's nothing to say about this. It's it's like a craziness because. It's proved our brains would be not like they are now if we would not eat the meat. Yeah. But what I'm saying, it's not necessary to eat the meat every day. No, you no. know, that's uh, what I'm trying trying to say. It's when you go hunting and the main thing is uh, I love how it works in America or in Scandinavia because you can take your kids out and hunt and show them what it's like. And if they see, you know, there is an animal who has to die for your steak, then they will never trash it. They will, they will never waste with the food because they know there was an animal and this animal died for them. But if you just feed your kids from the supermarket and you don't tell them where, where it comes from, they're like, you know, I'm grateful for, for food and you waste with the food, which is... So many people waste with the food because they don't see the death and all these things. It's like when I go hunting and, you know, I can proudly say 90% of meat what I eat is from nature. Of course, I go to the restaurant sometimes, but I know what I eat and I've seen that animal, it die because of me. This animal don't want to die. They want to live, same as we do, but this is the nature, you know, we eat the meat, but it's like, I don't want to eat the meat every day because I know what it takes. And that's what people will learn if they go hunting and they will know, you know, it's a lot of work and they see all these things. It's kind of dirty and stuff. So then they will realize and they will not waste with the food, not waste with the meat. That's, uh, you know, the other side what I'm trying to show people. Like, if you go hunting you will be more more grateful for your food. Yeah, no, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's, there's a, a very much a, a detachment between what we put in our, our mouths and where it comes from. And yeah, yeah that, that what you've just explained is exactly that. If people really thought about the fact that things, uh, you know, animals have to lose their lives in order for us to... In, in order for us to sustain our life and for in order for us to enjoy the food that we eat... Then yeah, I, I suppose people would la waste less, especially yeah. if you you've know, done what hunters then do. Here's you take another life. thing: like uh, I'm traveling for hunting all around the world, and then they see like, for example, zebra, and they can't take the fact like in a in a South Africa it's normal we we eat it like people eat it. If you go to the Kruger National Park and there is a restaurant and they will give you springbucks. Bring back meat, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's a normal. For them, it's normal. If you go to Amazonia, they will eat, I don't know, a parrot and whatever, you know. But people here who don't travel, they're just, uh, I don't know, too blind to see. Here is a, like, in, in every state, you eat something different. Mm -hmm. Like, for us, we eat the pork. And here is uh, other people who hate to eat the pork and they eat the cow. And then there is another people who eat a monkey. 
you know, and it's still me, it's still animal, it's still same. It doesn't matter if lion is more cute, but if we hunt a lion, we will eat the lion or, or we will give it to, to other people who have nothing to eat. To eat, you know. You, you've t- you've t- that's you've another craziness. You've it's touched, like, you, you've... oh, you kill it for fun, just for fun, but it's not true. We eat it, especially in Africa. Here's so many people who dying by hunger, so we giving them the, the meat because you can't keep it and you can't even sell it because it works like in South Africa. If you hunt, you have to kill it by headshot to be able to sell it to butcher. But if I bring in client or I go hunt there, we usually want to keep a head as a trophy as well. So we shoot on a heart and when you shoot a heart shot, then they say the meat is contaminated. So you have to give it to people who live there, you know, and they're usually poor. So they would go poach anyway. So we stop the poaching and we giving them just the meat from species that are old and they are, they are you know, past their prime, but that's the thing that people just don't want to understand. The smarter one, yes, they kind of message me and they're like, yeah, yeah, now I understand and thank you. But then here is like a haters and they just want to hate. And I, there is nothing. I, I have one here, actually. We've actually fell straight into it, which is talking about lines in Africa. Um, so Mike Lintz said to you in regards to, it was a picture you put up of a line that had been hunted and he said, uh, it was a male line. Um, he said, you know, once you kill the male line, you pretty much kill half the pride. What do you think happens to all the cubs that are in the pride? They're killed off by the other lines that are moving, uh, moving in the pride. And, uh, basically that's why he disagrees with, uh, trophy hunting. But I guess it goes back to what you were saying there, where you pick the, the old line who's past his prime, oh, who yes. probably isn't in charge, you know, who's going to be run out anyway. Here's like a government and they are issue permits what you can hunt and what you can't. So it's like they will give you lion what is past his prime and he's out of his pride. So you should just the old ones. So, you know, if they would like banner hunting anyways, they will want to poach them and they will poach exactly the lions who have a good cubes and all this stuff. So it's better when it's like, you know, under government and under people who decide which one will be hunted and which one not. Yeah, I think that... Anyways, we eat the meat, you know, that's the point. Anyways, you know, nobody trash that meat somewhere. It's never happened. I, I, I want to just touch on something else. You actually rewind a little bit. You were talking about... Uh, you were saying basically people care um, of, because of certain animals because they look cute and fluffy. And we've talked about yeah. this before, and why it's what... a strange thing with humans. Uh, and yeah. we we were um, we were talking with uh, Josh James yesterday, the Kiwi Bushman, and he was saying, you know, what's the difference between a rat and you know, well, and and anything, and, and anything, and an elephant? You know, it's still a, still a, it's still a life. Yeah, would you care just as much killing a rat? You know, killing thirty, fifty rats in a night yeah. to you know killing a deer or something like that. It's still a life at the end of the day, just because it's not cute and yeah. fluffy. <laughs> Yeah, and I think there's a, we definitely have it as in society where the emotions of people outweigh what their logic logical thought is, and it seems to remove any logical thought, and because their emotions run away with them, you know, with things like, you know, lions and, and elephants and, and animals that look cute and cuddly, they can't take that, they don't seem to be able to take that step back and actually process the logical information and and try and work out okay well why would somebody do this and is there a, is there a good reason for it i don't know if you saw and i'm not sure if i've read it correctly but i think today or in the next couple of weeks they're about to ban uh the import of lion trophies into the states uh and there is oh, yeah. there is some chat about the consequences of that in terms of lions in africa now but having much less value because tr- people who want to um, yes, go there and yes, hunt them. They can't exactly take the, the trophies problem, back. But they will see it immediately hmm. because people will start to poach them. Yeah. So, you know, it will be like a craziness, and we will see. You know, that's what I'm saying, and that's uh, that's what I'm trying to educate the people about this because they still thinking like, oh, if we stop, 
you know, this produce of the trophies and stuff, then they will, they, then we will save all alliance. But it's not true because here is the local people, and first thing what they will do is kill all the lions because of their cattle and stuff. Yeah, they will protect, yeah, yeah. and the lion will have no value for them. Well, unless but, you, you, know, you it's, it's well, like these people who try and protect animals, which is not protection at all. It's crazy. As long as they don't give it a, ni a name, then nobody will care. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean... <laughs> you know, the thing is, it's like when you see the offers of a, of a hunting for animals, like uh, I was used to work for a hunting safari and I still do. If someone wants, uh, you know, go hunt to Africa, they can call me and then you give them a price list. So this price list is still here. And if someone wants to protect animals, they can send the money to these farms. Because, you know, lots of them say like, oh, the Kruger's National Park, they can make a lot of money out of photographs and stuff. And yes, it's true. This big, huge park can make a lot of money by visitors, photographers, cameramen. But then here is so many small farms and they got, let's say, for example, six rhinos and they need to feed them. They need to feed them from the poachers from outside. Yeah. And it costs a lot of money. And there is no one who would give them money, like no PETA, no any organization will come to small farm and say, hey, here is the money for your rangers, for your fans, for your vehicles, for your dogs. No one. It's just the hunters who came in this farm and they, they can hunt whatever else. Even if you hunt the impala in this farm, you still donate the money to them for, you know, breeding, for breeding the the rhino, and, for yeah. example. So that's the thing. And if they ban import the trophies, no one will come to these smart small farm so what will they do they it's, will you know just a bankrupt in in terms of i mean trophy hunting uh, um and i we always talk about africa w when we talk about this but i mean it, it applies anywhere in the world it applies in the uk as much as it applies you know in north america for moose uh, we you've you've talked a lot about trophy hunting and how people wouldn't want to do it what do you, and you've also talked about how important it is for you where you're shooting animals and, you know, the, the, the connection with the meat and the food that you get from there. There is always going to be people anywhere in the world who their main care is purely trophy hunting, where they, they, their care is about the size of the antlers or the size of the horns on that animal. And they're not interested, you know, whether they get to eat it or, or maybe necessarily what happens to it after. I mean... How do you, how do you, def I mean, do you defend that? How do you defend it? And what do you say to those, those people who that's their well, only you know, interest? It's like, even if there is a person who wants, I don't know, let's say biggest games bug, they, he will go hunt this huge animal. And here is another people who will skin it for him. He will get his head, what he wants, but the meat not stay there. The PHs will take it, will give it to people. So anyway, they hunt, you know, mature animal and the meat goes to local people. They get the money from it so they can give work to another people. So I don't see anything bad. It's like, you know, it's still conservation and it still helps animals more than bun hunting. You know, here is no other way. I mean... It's kind of weird to kill something just because it has biggest horns, but if it helps the animals, then why not? Yeah, no, you, 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 you're saying it pretty much... We've had this discussion with quite a few people over the last couple of months on the yeah. podcast, and that, that's pretty much the conclusion we always come to and you know try and express is that, yeah, okay, that person... You know, the problem is, problem is always people because what you, you can see... In the another side, just to be fair, the problem is in Africa, it's huge business. And here is not just nice people, but here can be very bad people who started using it, you know. And you can see, like, the causes with the cane hunting, it's not just about the lions. Here can be 
for example, here you can be animal what in uh, one side of the world and here is a hunter who wants to hunt it and they will put it on a sleep and bring it to another farm and this is what I don't agree with. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's not hunting if they just put on a sleep some animal or put the drugs on them and then put them on some farm and then some hunter come another day in 20 hours and just shoot it. You know, it's not hunting. It's just a bloody business. And that's something that needs to be bringing more on the light for hunters. And they need to be educated how it looks like, like what's uh, the normal behavior of the animal and what's uh, weird behavior after drugs. And then the clients can recognize here is a trout. And these outfitters just put on a sleep some animal and bring it here for money. Then they, they can say, you know, no, I don't agree with this. I want to hunt and I'm a proper hunter. And, you know, you just trying to pull my leg with this. So that's the another thing what we need to work. Mm, yeah, like, no, educate it's... the hunters how it looks like when someone trying to give you animal what's tame for a hunting you know? yeah it's because it's happening it's not not much but like 10 percent, it happens you know and it's something that i really don't agree with yeah i think as as hunters as, as true hunters anytime that kind of operation is in existence it jeopardizes what all the good that we do and we definitely yeah. need to make sure that we make it very very clear that we are not in support of of practices like that um yeah there there, there is a bad. and it's not just not just in africa it happens here yeah, all yeah. over the yeah. europe with, yeah. the, with the red tags you know but everyone just is like oh no it's not happening but it is and you know hunters need to be informed about this is this can happen to you if you pay for hunt and you know it can be happening to you and you're only one who can stop this practices mm. i mean what what do you think about um in in america in texas they make a big thing there of that you know they've got their ranches and there's some places yeah. you can go in texas and you can shoot all manner of species of african game there or um, european game that wouldn't naturally be found there and okay the the ranches are quite big but they're still ranches and it's, it's artificial obviously because those animals shouldn't be there what do you what do you make of of uh of things like that oh i don't know i've never been there no, i haven't been so either i so. can't say i can't say how it how it really works uh, but it's kind of weird to me like bring animal that not belongs to that state mm -hmm. to another you know i think the part of a uh, hunting adventure is uh, to follow and to travel for the animal you want to hunt because then you can see the culture of the people yeah. and you can see what's happening over there, like what's really happening, and not just go. It's like a go hunt in a zoo or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. To me, yeah, yeah no, know? I agree. I, I, it, it doesn't interest me in the slightest. I want to, I want to experience everything that encompasses hunting yeah. you know, a particular species in in the place that it belongs. When we first started following you, you know, you had what did you say, Dale? Twenty, thirty thousand. Yeah, it was about twenty thousand on, on Facebook, and now you're one hundred and forty, hundred and fifty thousand people. What? It's it's quite amazing. But you must, I mean, you must have thousands of people literally every day starting to follow you. You know, it's uh, it's like because um, I started to write for magazines, like I, I'm writing for American magazine for Australian magazine, for European magazines, and that's where the people can see me and now they find my page and they just put a like on it. Also in a TV, you know, it's like I'm in a Czech TV. Now I will be in American TV with Larissa and I'm um, in the sports and fields in the UK yeah. and all over the world. So it means the people can find me and if they like me, they just give me a like and I see they like me. Some of them. So you you are probably without a shadow of doubt one of the largest hunting pages in in Europe. I don't think there is anyone bigger than yeah, you. Yeah, I think I mean the the big sort of female hunting names that that spring to mind. Obviously, you I think you mentioned Melissa Buckman earlier, and obviously yeah. Eva Shockey. I think she's got like one point two million or three million. She goes up by about a hundred thousand a day <laughs> on her social media feeds. Uh, but certainly in Europe, I think you must be one of the, yeah, certainly one of the biggest yeah, uh, European I think I'm fans. only one here. Yeah. <laughs> but here is some uh, some girls, but 
they're not doing it like not so big as me. Yeah. Um. So in the last, uh, so what do you? How do you organize your year now? I mean, how do you organize what you're gonna do, where, or does stuff just come into you? Does it fall into place, or do you kind of yeah, have a plan? Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I I got the team like it's me, my cameraman, sometimes just photographer travel with. It's like with the with the last trip, it was like Camp Laponia invites us, so they take care of us. They took care of our tickets because here is some touristic project, South Lapland. So they helped us to come because they need exposure in a in a media. They wanted me to write about it um, in a hunting magazines and talk about it, like how was my my trip and how is the hunting out in Sweden. So they just invite us and you know I come with my cameraman with my photographer and we do this adventure take a picture take a video and then i'm putting it on my page and other people can see and if they want they can go and try it too so usually it's like the outfitters invite us the other thing is i was used to work for african safari so when there was a people who messaged me like oh we want to try hunting in africa so i said well yeah here is a safari you can go with and i will come too and i will be your guide or i can make a film of you hunting mm-hmm. so that's also kind of popular so they message me like oh come to africa and i'm like okay i will take my cameraman and if you take care of me we will come so that's usually how it works then we do like exchange hunts with the persons who are kind of famous like famous hunters so they come to me hunt with me then i come to them yeah. you know when they come to me i take care of them and if i come to them they ter- they take care of me so that's that's what i do basically but now it's way better because i have a lot of fans and here is a couple magazines who take everything what i give them mm-hmm. like this florida one it's girls guns and girls which is uh, female magazine about the hunting where's that then based in Australia, usually i give uh, it's a uh, chick smashing grantors it's uh, some most of popular most popular magazine in australia and of course here in the uh, czech republic and central europe i have also magazine so that's where the people find me and you know like for outfitter if he pay for for advertising in all these magazines it costs him a lot of money so mm-hmm. for them it's better to invite me and they get to advertise out of it and have you got any any big hunts coming up in 2016 anything really special well i don't want to say like uh, i don't know it's every hunt is special you know because it's a uh, it's adventure so you can say this one is more special than the other one yeah. because every animal you go hunt, especially when you travel there, always you meet new people, always you do what you love, always you're with the great people. It's like for now, my boyfriend is my cameraman, so he's following me on, <laughs> on my trip. Well, that's that, that makes it so, nice and easy. <laughs> yeah. So it's perfect because in the past I had big troubles with the relationships and stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, because you're away all the time. Yeah. What what happens if you want to fire your cameraman, though? That's the problem. You can't (laughs) fire your cameraman now, though, because you're boyfriend, too. (laughs) Yeah, now now it's fine, you know. So uh, of, of all the places that you haven't been and all the things that you haven't hunted, is there anything in particular that you're like, I really want to experience that, that you haven't done already? Yes. Uh, yes, uh, some Greenland adventure like hunting for musk oxen oh, okay. or some Aliashka or something like this. Definitely, I need to do something like this. Nice and cold. But uh, yeah, Greenland looks amazing. Yeah, it does look amazing. It really does. <laughs> yeah. I, I know a couple of guys who've, um, who've hunted musk ox in the last couple of years. And yeah, I mean, it's the, it's the most incredible creature when you look at it there with their big shaggy coat and... They're there in in yeah. these freezing cold conditions, and you just think to yourself, "How on earth does anything live out there?" Oh, it's crazy in the barren yeah. land. But you know, that was I was I was thinking same thing when I was in Sweden. Now, yeah, 
<laughs> because it was also too cold and i was like how can they survive now of course you well, yeah, you, you, you hunt with um a rifle and a bow which obviously we we don't do any of that in the uk have you always hunted with a yeah, bow um I'm, I'm kind of beginner with the, with the bow oh, okay because it's illegal here as well. Oh, is it? So oh, okay. You don't have much uh, time and opportunities to go and practice. So I'm beginner with a bow. Uh, have you have you have you killed anything with the bow? Yeah, once. Well, and well, once with a crossbow. With a crossbow as well. Because I'm still still in training. And, you know, it's like when you're a man, you're more uh, you have more power. So for me. I got it set up like in 45 calibers, which is really not much. So I need to go really, really close because oh, okay, you know, yeah. I'm not able to hit something. So all I got is uh, some uh, some dough. Okay, so you, you're still you're because still training. I need to, make to practice sure. more. So. Okay, fair enough. But I'm trying. Do you, I mean, in terms of enjoyment, do you get do you do you feel like you get more enjoyment shooting out shooting with your bow? Yeah. You yes. prefer it to a rifle? With a, with a bow, it's like a real hunting, you know. With a rifle, you can you can hunt from a long distance. And when you when you're a bow hunt, you need to pay attention to another things like it's your scent, and you need to get close to the animal. So it's really different. Yeah, da- David um, David Carson Peterson. He was he was talking to us. Uh, from Denmark a, f- a few weeks back about hunting with a bow because he does quite a lot of it and he was explaining just how much more of a heightened experience it is just because when you would normally be getting ready to take a shot with a rifle you're actually starting to hunt with a bow because you've got yeah. you're, you're at 100 meters but you need to be at you know 40 meters yeah yeah so yeah I, I, I've, I've the white tail deer though with a crossbow in indiana it's like five years ago but it was great experience i mean it's a very very different hunt than here in the europe hmm. I, I was gonna say, what were you gonna say i was gonna ask about the university yeah talk. that's exactly oh, what i was going to ask it. well we i found um a youtube video of you online it wasn't actually on your page it was just um and you were talking at university um, or a college or a school, I'm not sure what it was. It was in a different language. Yeah, it was university. university. It was Mendel's University in Czech Republic. Now, there was a lot of protesters, so can you tell us about yeah, tell the tell us about thing. the experience yeah. and what you were talking about in the protest. Yeah, well, um, it's, it's a Czech University, and they invite me because they know it's a you know, problem, and people, they hate the hunting, but it's just lack of education, and that's what we tried to to change so the czech university mendels they invite me and they were like if you want we can manage and you can uh, you can lecture here for our students but also people from outside can come but they had to register like prove they are normal they are not like <laughs> these people outside but anyways these people could uh, register and go inside as well but the problem is that guy who is like their leader or some, he's got some organization and he just needs attention for his organization to get the money out of the people. Okay. So that's the main reason why they didn't come in, but they stayed outside and made a mess that big as they could because they need attention and they getting attention out of me if they are like, oh, we get, we against her. So... That's uh, that's all the reason because it was usually and mostly like 14 years people, you know, like kids, and they don't know. They are just under his influence, and okay. well, it was crazy. I had like 400 people inside who was really interested about the hunting and what it means. And how is it feels when you hunt and travel all around? And the heroes kind of like ten people who don't agree with the with the hunting. And we had a conversation, like really normal conversation. When after this, they said, you know, yeah, now I understand some of the things. I still don't agree with it, but now I understand. But these people who was outside, they don't want to understand. They don't even want to try. They just want to make a mess. 
and the hate, you know, and there is uh, like no point to go out and try to talk with them because here, here is, you know, no result. They want to hate and if someone wants to hate, he will hate. Yeah, they don't you, want to listen. You seem to handle the well, the hate quite well, actually. Not just online, just on some of the, the like that that university one. You could see when you came out, people are shouting at you, so on. You don't really rise to it. You seem to handle it quite well, and even online, you kind of I don't know. Do you pick your battles quite well? Because from the looks of it, you do. When there's someone that writes something fairly sensible, but they're against what you do, uh, you tend to write back to them. But obviously, the complete clowns that are telling you to go kill yourself, you don't. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's like you can argue with someone who is a little bit smart and who try to understand, but here is, it's, uh, you know, it would be just wasting of my time to try to talk to people who are writing the things like, oh, you peep, 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 yeah. you know, there's no point. It's, if I would answer anyone from a people or from these people, I would not do anything else and it's not pay my bills. You know? Yeah, no, that's true. Like, it's, there's no point. It takes a lot of time to, to manage all the social media stuff and, and respond to people. Why do you, it, it's very much the case that female hunters get a much harder time about being hunters than, than, yes. than males. I mean, there's a, there's a lot yes. more male hunters out there, obviously. And yeah. yet, the, what we see in, in the press is female. And you know, when, when you would be like an ugly, fat woman, then you, you don't get a hard time as well. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're right. Yeah. Uh, I laugh, but you are absolutely right. And that's because that's what sells newspapers, isn't it? It's another thing what's really amazing, you know. It's like a crazy. I remember three years ago or maybe a year ago, there was some huntress from America. I don't know. Kendall exactly. Jones. Was it? was it Kendall by any chance? She comes up quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, maybe it was her. And the cheerleader. She was managing on a, on her page something like, uh, no, it starts like, here was a, some uh, internet competition about the hottest huntress okay, in the yeah, world yeah. or something like this. And you look in a discussion under it and there was like, oh, they are beep, 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 a lot of hate, a lot of, lot of shit. <laughs> and then she said, oh, okay, I will make a competition of a hottest hunter ever. There was like, I don't know, let's say 100 male hunters. And there was no one who would comment like, oh, he is beep, 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 beep. <laughs> no. So, you know, it, it likes proof, you know, when men is doing it, it's fine, it's okay. But when it's me and I'm a woman, then I'm a horrible person and I'm pee, 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 pee. But I think usually it comes from, I don't know, girls who are ugly or they are beautiful. Even they are beautiful, but they have nothing to do except uh, take care about their nails. So <laughs> now they are bored and they find me on my Facebook oh, and, and I'm really doing something, you know, and I'm traveling and I'm kind of, you, you think know, that's uh, a, bit, a bit of a, a jealousy thing like, as well? Oh, no. I, so I, I have to write her something bad. I, I, I promise this is the this I promise this is the last thing I'm gonna read from your page. Why? And because this is an attack basic well Did somebody uh, just sent that to you. No, no, but I, I had it before. So this <laughs> So this is the kind of thing that gets sent. I mean, I, I'm only saying this because it's particularly aimed at females, I guess. It says, uh, aimed at you, uh, you are an effing ugly lesbian, and I hope your children and your effing mother die of cancer very slowly. <laughs> I, I just wonder whether these uh, people... That's only half of it. I'm not reading, You're the, not rest. reading the rest. I'm not just... reading the rest. <laughs> It's it's really it's quite disgusting, really, because there there are these people yeah, who are they're upset with you or or other hunters because of this uh, you know because of taking an animal's life, and yet they're willing death on another human. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. I don't know if they actually think yeah. about what they're saying. They're they're wishing death yeah. upon somebody. They're like you're crazy, but you know, what's well, more funny on it? You click on their profiles, and then there is a picture. They're in a restaurant with a steak. <laughs> then there is a picture like beautiful woman who swear like, I don't know, horrible creator. And she's wearing some purse from, from a fur, you know. With or yeah, from fur or cow, leather, or, yeah. Like a Louis Vuitton or something <laughs> like this. But she's writing me, oh, you c <laughs> you know. I think we're going to have to make this explicit now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but <laughs> yeah, no, it 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 is. It's pretty dreadful. Crazy, and, and people know, don't like... actually look at their own lives. That these people who write this, they don't look at their own lives and themselves and all the stuff around them because you don't have to. You, I could walk into most people's houses and in twenty seconds find something that is from some sort of animal product, even if they yeah. don't even realize it. You could even have a vegan, yeah. and I bet you've got uh, animal I, products. In I house. um, I saw uh, there was a bit with uh, Jim Shockey, and he was talking about why is it acceptable for mainstream TV, and I I guess this is very particular in the UK because we don't have any hunting shows on on TV. Why is it acceptable for McDonald's, Burger King, and, and in fact many of the people that sell food, uh, especially in summer when they're grilling a barbecue, to show you know meat being cooked and everyone loving and enjoying meat but they would never in a million years show how that meat got there and if you did they would criticize you for it yeah that's a good point you know why is it acceptable for someone to be sitting there going ah oh, it's a delicious cheeseburger from mcdonald's everybody should try this yeah. but if i put up it's a like picture of the cow thing, before it got you know. there yeah Facebook is full of uh, advertised for a mcdonald's and stuff but they banning my page because i show that yeah, you, know, you show the the start of the crazy, process. But everyone is there with a with a I don't know burger and steak in front of them, and they are like, yeah, yeah, perfect. You mm. know, that's crazy. No, it is madness. I, we were talking about this the other day. Is, uh, or maybe I was talking about it with my girlfriend. Actually, we were discussing about you know the people just what we've been talking about. People who write hate comments on hunters, and a lot of people don't realize that even if they themselves are quite happy to you know delete meat from their diet in order for them to be able to you know have a foot to stand on to criticize hunters they probably have a cat or a dog which they then feed meat to or or tin tuna yeah. which is exactly the same thing Exactly. You know, you you might not be eating it yourself, but you're still you've still you've still got blood on your hands in some way or or form. Yeah. You know, even if you're feeding you something know, to there, your pets. There is other point. I had a part time job uh, when I was in Africa because I wasn't there just for safari. At the times when I was used to be there, I had a boyfriend there, and I kind of I was in a in a let's say, with the local people who's living there, not just like a visitor on a safari, but with the real people who's living there. And uh, my ex-boyfriend, at the time he was my boyfriend, they had a farm with the oranges and stuff. Oh, right, and, that's interesting. Uh, yeah. What you do when, uh, when you're growing uh, oranges and there is, you know, lots of uh, wild pigs, and here is a monkey who eating your orange. Yes, yes. So you hire, they hire hunters and they shoot all the monkeys on an orange farm. Then the oranges grows to Europe and then some vegetarian eat it. And he's like, oh, I'm protecting animals. I'm eating just the vegetables. But they don't see the vegetables had to grow somewhere. And, you know, that place where it grows was... A, belong as animals before yeah we yeah. had to prove that place yeah. we had to destroy their homes and kill them and then you can eat your orange your yeah. you know and it's same with with everything it's we've talked about palm, with palm oil before same with everything yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, it, uh, i i've yeah we, we've talked about palm oil and people not really realizing the the destruction of rainforest to grow palm oil but the what you're talking about with the baboons and monkeys you know, eating on the, on the citrus plantations in Africa. I've I've done it. I, I've I've gone there with friends of mine who are professional hunters in South Africa, and you know we've shot baboons off the, off these ah. you know in these citrus plantations for that very reason because they're incredibly destructive. And I, yeah, yeah, it's a very. That's a, I'm gonna I'm gonna steal that anecdote at some point in the future because it's a really it's a really good example of uh you know there's a fruit that you would never think would necessarily have been involved in any kind of loss of life and yet you're you're exactly right um and i should have thought of it because i've done it <laughs> yeah so that's it you know there is always people just need to find you know better way how to live together all together in this planet and you know don't damage it as how we do mm -hmm. but you know i think a hunting is a way how to do you know how to eat better and you know how to 
be more with the, with the nature. Like it's better than buying a meat because it's same, you know, when there is a farm, it's not just about the animals suffer, but these farms have to feed these animals. So they destroy forests to make a field there and then they plant a corn or something, you know. So it's like a magic circle would really damage our our nature and everything. So it's way better when you it's go wild just to hunt now. and yeah. you hunt the animals yeah. from outside. There's a really good picture. Uh, I'll see if I can find it and I'll stick it. Um, I'll stick a link to it in the this podcast description. But there's a really good picture of um, a hunting con- uh, a hunting um, concession. And there's a the big game fence between it, and you can see this beautiful, oh, beautiful yeah. area of bush, just thick, lush, and green. And on the other side of it, it just looks like desert. And the reason why the other side looks like that is that was all um, that was for agriculture and and cattle, and obviously managed managed for that yeah. purpose. And that's what it looks like now. And yet the game uh, conservation area, which is a hunting area, is you know lush and green and well managed. And so, yeah, that I mean, that's a good example of what you're saying about how it uh, the the extra benefits to it because if you want to go and eat your beef, it still has to eat something, and you have to reclaim wild areas to be able to go and put you know put cattle on it. But uh, here's something that I, I just thought of just while you were talking about that. I mean, I I obviously totally agree with that. We eat pretty much, I'd say, like 95 percent wild meat. Uh, in our household, I, I had venison lasagna last oh, night. Well, there you that, go. That, that, was, that, that was shot by him. <laughs> but <laughs> do we actually have enough game in the world for everybody to do that? I don't think we do. I don't think we do. I don't think we do. So it's yeah, it's something uh, I hadn't I, really thought about before. I mean, uh, we we are, obviously yeah. we like to instill this because it's it, it is the reason why we do it, and we you know, we say how you know fantastic and marvelous it is to go out hunting and you know kill this meat that we are eating because of all the all the benefits of that yeah, but everybody but, can't know, enjoy that like you know imagine uh, the people will eat let's say less meat because they will see how the animals dying and stuff so now here will be less animals we want to kill for food because we see them die and stuff so that's the less then uh, if there is a less uh, the farm animals then here is more space for uh, bring a forest back so it means there can be more animals but the answer is no we we can't be like everyone will go hunt but i think the number of the farms and uh, the percentage of um, of a land uh, what suffers by these farming could be way smaller like let's say 30 percent less mm-hmm. 30 40 so you, you're, su- you're suggesting that maybe we need to readdress the balance so maybe we need to yes. manage and make better use of our wild resources but in a sustainable way so that we could maybe cut yeah. back on the intensive intensive agriculture that's an interesting Let's one say, you know not everybody not everybody will start a hunting or buy meat from a hunters but if there is more people doing it it's just the better for us so we need just more people who will like convince the people to do a hunting and get the meat from uh, from a nature and not from a farm and then it will be better i think that's why i do what i do because i think that mm. um just to go uh back to um what to, well, kind of back to the, the the trophy hunting aspect of it but in terms of in terms of pictures i was reading uh, I can't actually remember what uh, magazine it was in. Um, I can't remember. If I can remember, I'll put the link. Are you up. talking about taking pictures? Yeah, yeah. I was talking. I, oh, I tell you what it was. I was actually I was reading Sports Field magazine, a really really good American magazine. And there's um there's uh, always a series, uh, uh, sorry, an article in there every month on conservation. And the the chap in there was talking about how we need to change or we need to address how we are perceived. So. I mean, I've certainly, I've certainly done this in the past, and I know I've, I've seen the vast majority of, of hunters they do this, where they, they do their hunt and they've killed whatever it is that they're, they're killing. It doesn't even have to be a, a trophy animal. By that, I mean you know something with horns or antlers. But they, they sit there and take a picture of it in a, in a trophy kind of pose. You know that they're behind it. They've got, you know, their, their, their rifle in their hand and they're, they're smiling and they're happy. And we've talked about this before. 
to express the fact that they're not gleeful over the fact they've just taken something's life. They're gleeful over the over the experience the whole that experience they've had it, yeah. and everything that encompasses oh, yeah. it. But should we yeah. should we be more sympathetic to the fact that we know that there are a lot of people out there who don't like what we do and that we should be taking pictures, our, our kind of trophy pictures, in a way that truly reflects uh, the sort of emotion of it. So, I mean, I, I've started to do it in the, in the magazines that I write for. I think I write for the same Australian magazine as you, actually, as well as one in uh, a sporting rifle in the UK. And a lot of the pictures that I take now, I try and uh, capture a lot more of the atmosphere and a lot more emotion. The emotion I, yeah. I, I don't take any traditional fo- um, trophy hunting pictures anymore. I just, I've stopped doing it. You'll never see me anymore sitting behind an animal, you know, smiling to the to the camera with a rifle. I'm doing more, yeah, you know, more thoughtful type pictures. Do you think that's something that we should encourage? Well, for me, you know, it's like I put a lot of work on it. And when I go hunt, uh, usually it's uh, something nice for me and I don't take it like, you know, something bad. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's necessary to smile. Why not? You know, when you put the, all these efforts, you put the money on, you put the ammunition on, you put your time on to get your meat. And now you harvest it and it doesn't matter if it has horns or not. You get your meat for your freezer and you are really happy and you are proud of it. So for me, there is no reason to don't smile. Why? You know, here is so many pictures, people in a restaurant, they are happy, he 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 and mm, smile okay, with, yeah, a, with yeah. a food on, on their plate. So why should I be like a sad on my picture? No way. I will always smile because I'm happy to be a hunter and I'm proud of it. And there is, you know, no point to be sad. Yeah, no, nature I, yeah, and yeah. I'm doing my best for nature. So I will always smile on my picture. And, you know, if someone don't understand, then it's problem you, you, you know you just you just said something there about people smiling in a restaurant and eating their food that i've actually never thought of I, we, we should start posting those over the internet as uh, as as uh, look, trophy look, pictures look, trophy pictures of my of my <laughs> of yeah. your mcdonald's yeah. <laughs> and the internet is full of it i don't know if yours but if i open my facebook there's always some of my friends and oh, they're food. like oh, today we are in this restaurant oh it's <laughs> perfect yeah, that's a really good it's point. Nice. We should start a campaign. We should start a campaign because it's all you. Always, yeah, I, especially my. I think my female friends are the worst for it. Selfies in restaurants with uh, or or yeah. uh, or, uh, or like food porn on Instagram and stuff like that. Yeah, where you're taking pictures take, of the food yeah, that you've just yeah. cooked. Yeah, ne- I've never thought about it like you that. You know, before. the other thing is like go shopping. Oh, we go shopping. Yes, we go shopping. For me, it's same. Oh, I go hunting. Perfect. You know. Someone goes shopping and is happy because they go shopping. So this is my shopping, and I'm happy about it. <laughs> That's good. I know. I'm, I'm definitely gonna. I think I'm gonna have to re-listen to this afterwards because there's a lot of takeaways from what you're saying. It's uh, it's really good. And I hope that it does make. I hope that it does make you know people think. And I, one of the things I think is really important about debates like we, we're having with you and we've had with Josh uh, recently and and everyone else that we've had on the podcast is that if you're a hunter and you're listening to it, and we would love non-hunters to listen to this stuff too, I mean, that's kind of the point, but if you're a hunter and you're listening to this, it gives you various um, various different aspects and angles and more ammunition to your arguments, so people can listen to you and hear what you're saying. I mean, you've come up with things today that I hadn't necessarily thought about before. And if you can just stick that as a hunter in the back of your brain so that when you do have to engage with people who are you know vehemently against what you do, you can at least approach it in a, in, a, in a calm, collected, and educated way. And I think that's the key. I mean, the, the, the pictures that you're talking about, I, mean, I, I really appreciate what you've said there. You're saying, you know, you've put in all the effort. Why should, why should you not take the picture that you want to take, which is, you know, what we would maybe uh, look at as a, a classic trophy-type picture, whether it is a trophy animal or not. Um, the media don't care about no, that. No, they don't. And I think the, the issue with it is that if you just take that picture and you stick it in a newspaper... And there's no no background to it, and somebody is completely ignorant to ed- everything that goes into doing that. It's just a standalone picture, and it just you can tell whatever story you want with that picture. And if someone doesn't know, they're gonna they're gonna I, believe I, it. I think the best example of that is um, 
when cats have been hunted and it's put over the the shoulders mm-hmm. uh, because I think, well, once again, it was a few American female hunters and probably yourself, actually, because you've been in the paper a few times over here. Uh, as soon as they put yeah. a, a cat over the shoulders, the, the newspapers just go nuts over it. <clears throat> yeah, w- they do. Which is... Or the, the other one that we've seen recently was uh, lying down beside a giraffe. Oh, yeah. Um, I can't remember who yeah. that was. We've, was just... it you, actually? Was it you lying down? No, no, yeah. no. I'm sure one. it was Melissa. Was it Melissa? I'm not we, Melissa Bachman. We, we, we've, we've discussed it before. But... No, it wasn't Melissa Bachman. It was some blonde girl. Yeah. I can't remember we, her name. We, we've discussed it before because Rick, <laughs> we were talking about Ricky Gervais and, and he, was yeah. the, he, he was the one that put it into the limelight in, well, not just the yeah. UK, around the world was her lying. Yeah, I, lying I remember it. Has he ever attacked you? Ricky, you. no, not yet. Don't worry, there's time. Uh, yeah, he will. Don't worry, he'll get hold. Of, he'll get hold of you. <laughs> I'm surprised he hasn't, to be honest. Uh, it's only a matter of time before one of his fans send send in send in the killer, the killer from from. <laughs> I mean, what what? How do you see the the future of hunting? We we talk about this quite a lot as well because because we are constantly under attack. There's always little aspects all around the world, little laws and regulations that are constantly eating away at our you know, ability to hunt and, and the potential you know, future of hunting. What I mentioned earlier about them banning, uh, banning the import of lion trophies into America is the most recent example of that. I mean, how, well, how do you... Also, um, I mean, you could just look at Europe. Um, ban on semi-automatic rifles across Europe. Yeah, I mean, the reasons for that were not uh, hunting related. No, but, but the, the point potential, being, the point yeah, being is it's it, one it more all, thing. Yeah, it's one more thing. I mean, how do you see the, the future of hunting in the next 10, 20 years? Well, uh, I only hope people will realize, you know, the mistakes. What they do is they bun it and then it will be unbunned and we will be able to hunt. And I also hope here is a, in America is big increase of the female hunters and uh, here is big increase of the hunters. And I hope this trend will come to the Europe. That's what I hope. Mm. So what would you say to any female hunters or, or females that want to be involved? Because in, you know, I think it is up and coming. I think there is more, yeah, more, more is, females yeah. starting, starting to do it. But there might be some out there that might be a little bit apprehensive and getting getting into because it because it, it's seen i suppose as a, a bit of a, a man's occupation which is it couldn't be further from the truth but i mean that is the, yeah, the perception you know, over time uh, the main problem is like uh, lots of companies are not ready for female hunters which means you know you have a big problem even to get nice clothes here in europe you know usually i i had to buy everything in the united states now it's getting better because this trend coming into the Europe slowly. But the big problem is these anti-hunters and all these luck educated people. But if there is a female hunter and then I would just say, you know, don't be afraid. Look at me. You know, I don't care if someone hates me. I know what I'm doing and I know why. And this is only thing what matters. If you live with the hunting and you have your family to support you or hunting with you, then you are happy and that's what matters. And this is what actually makes the people angry because they see you're happy, you're doing what you love. So if there is some female hunter, let's be a hunter and be yourself and don't let anyone else bother you with their opinion. Yeah, you know, I think it is the... The increase in uh, the various female profiles, your, yourself and and the, the other females that we've we've mentioned uh, in, during the podcast who hunt, I think the the increase in their profile has definitely helped um, new female hunters come through, and it, it's really great to see. Um, yeah, there was in fact there was a report saying that there were even in the UK actually that there were more more female hunters taking up taking up shooting than ever before. Ah. Which is which is great, and and it's good to see, and it can only be good for um, it can only be it can only be good for hunting, um, and I just hope that because they are, it is so they do seem to be the target of um, a lot of the the negative press. I just hope that that doesn't put put people off, um, and they just yeah. yeah, I think they just need to you know you need to have a strong resolve, know why you're doing it, and just and just stand up for yourself, you know, like like you do, and and like so many others do. Yep. Thank yep. you so much for uh, 
for joining us today. It's been it's been a really fascinating discussion. And uh, I'm really pleased yeah, how clear that you. we're talking to you all the way over in, in your home country. And uh, the line has been really clear. So yeah, it has been. been great. It's been good. Yeah. So when, when are you away Thank next? You. Again? When, when are you away? <laughs> <So> the line's <laughs> been really clear. Uh, when, are, when are you away next? Uh, I should be maybe in Africa in uh, two months. Two months. So time. I will be away just here around the Europe, just for some wild boars and stuff what we have here. But my next big trip should be into the South Africa. Are you uh, hunting anything in particular? Mm. You're not sure yet. No, I want my boyfriend to hunt his first African animal. That's uh, the mission. Okay. And I don't know what what the outfitter wants me to hunt and we will just have adventure and film all so i'll see maybe i'm going there with uh, some of my friends they're coming as a client so they will join us oh maybe maybe after this uh, radio someone will call me <laughs> and they will go with me yeah you too. never know uh, you, you know, you know so, uh, w- you you were talking about all the the filming that you're doing. Where is that going out? Is that going on your YouTube channel? The the filming that you've been doing recently and the that, filming. You know, that's just what I was going to oh, worry about. Yeah. yeah, it goes it goes to my page. It goes uh, some of some of it goes in a uh, Czech TV. So oh, okay. Some will go to Charlie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah. yeah, then I work with one uh, Italian uh, channel as well, and I'm trying to get into the fishing and hunting channel in the central Europe, which is in like five states here. So I'm trying to make some documents and give it to them. But, you know, the problem, always there is a problem with the sponsor and money, you know. Yeah. It's like you're always looking because the production and, you know, like. We lost I, you. We lost you just in the final few few minutes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm trying to think where we were. Uh, I'm uh, actually, we were talking about. Oh, oh I was going to ask you a question actually. Uh, when you're doing a lot of this filming, uh, you speak four languages, don't you? Well, not four. I speak English, Czech. I can speak Slovakian, maybe a little bit Croatian. Okay, so <laughs> but do you, you do all of them in in English? All of the the films that you make? Most of them in English, and some of them in Czech. Okay. okay. But mostly in English. And it, because my fans, you know, they are English. They can speak English. So yeah, I can't so. speak in a, in a Czech language or a Slovakian language. They would be like, "Oh, what is she saying?" <laughs> <laughs> so if if people want to check you out, the the easiest way, I guess, is your your Facebook and your YouTube channel. Yes. Yes. We'll stick uh, we'll stick we'll, those we, links yeah, on, we'll, the, we'll on put the description on our, so people our can description. see. But uh, thank you very much for coming on. Yeah, and no, I really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. It's quite all right. Thank you very much for listening to the Into the Wilderness podcast. I hope you enjoyed that one. I really did. It was great speaking to Michaela. Now, you'll notice that Byron is not with me anymore. Well, he is behind me in a picture here. If you're watching on YouTube, he is actually behind me on uh, one of the posters. But he's no longer here in the studio. He's away right now. And that's because we often record the beginnings and the ends at different times. And we do that so that we can bring you more up-to-date stuff because the shows are often recorded weeks in advance. Now, because you've hung on all the way to the end, and now this is the advantage of listening to the podcast all the way through, which I'm sure all of you do, we're going to give away something now. So this might be more useful for our Irish listeners, but it's not exclusive to the Irish listeners. So anyone can do this. If you want four passes for the Great Game Fairs of Ireland, then just email greatgamefairs at gmail.com and mention the podcast. And the first person that mentions the podcast with their address will get them. Now, it doesn't just stand there. We sort you out. Don't worry. For all our listeners, if you want to go to the Great Game Fairs of Ireland, if you email the same address, greatgamefairs at gmail.com, you will get half price tickets. Just mention the podcast. Thank you very much for the Great Game Fairs of Ireland for sorting us out with us. Sorting that out for us. Sorry, I'm losing my mind here again. Now, coming up in a few weeks' time, we have a very, very important podcast. It's not just important, it's also very interesting. And it's about Link's introduction 
into the UK. Now, this podcast will be used as part of the consultation process. So get your questions in, get your opinions in now. We've had hundreds of people messaging us, emailing us, uh, you, you name it, calling. It's been done. Now, we've had so many people we've had so many people contact us that not everyone's questions or opinions will be read on the podcast. But because it's being used as part of the consultation process, we've gathered it all together, we've put it on a document, and it will be passed on. So regardless if it gets mentioned on the podcast, you will get it out there. So email podcast at paceproductions.com for any questions you want about uh, links, and we will be talking to the leading scientist on links. And so, yeah, no, get involved. And hopefully a few weeks after that, we're going to be talking to the police. Can't say any more than that right now, but it will be another good podcast, as they all are. Now, thank you very much. I've got a few things to to mention. Uh, Colin McCarthy, our American listener. Thank you. You've been commenting again. Thank you very much for listening to the show. And uh, I hope uh, more Americans uh, listen to the, the show as well. And Wesley M., thank you very much for your review on iTunes. So uh, much appreciated. Five stars. Thank you very much for all the rest of our listeners. If you would like to leave us a review on iTunes, that would be great. Five stars. That would be fantastic. Uh, yeah, if you leave us a review, it means that we can get higher up in the rankings and more people can find us. That's the the bottom line. But thank you for all the people that have left uh, comments so far. It's uh, It's been overwhelming, actually, the amount of nice comments people have been leaving us about the, the show. So you can download the show on iTunes, Stitcher for the Android people out there. But you can also get that on uh, Apple device as well. SoundCloud. And, of course, YouTube, which is now our... Well, now we've just started doing YouTube videos, so you can uh, now see us, which is great. This show is supported by the Scottish Association for Country Sports, who who we would not be able to do the show without their support. So thank you very much for that. And join us again in two weeks' time. Thank you. <laughs>